The quantum law of being is a fascinating concept that turns our understanding of reality on its head. It's not just some airy-fairy idea. It's backed by quantum physics and echoes ancient wisdom. So, what's it all about? In essence, this law says that our reality isn't set in stone. It's more like a responsive living thing that shapes itself according to our consciousness. Wild, right? But stick with me here. Let's start with quantum physics. At the tiniest level of reality, we're talking subatomic particles here. Things get weird. These particles don't behave like the solid, predictable objects we're used to. Instead, they exist in a state of possibility until they're observed. It's called the observer effect, and it suggests that consciousness itself plays a role in shaping reality. There's this famous experiment called the double slit experiment. Without getting too technical, it shows that electrons, tiny particles that make up atoms, actually behave differently when they're being watched. They go from acting like waves to acting like particles. It's as if they know they're being observed. Now let's zoom out a bit. Imagine a vast field of infinite possibilities. That's what quantum physicists call the quantum field. It contains every potential outcome for your life. But here's the kicker. You're not just picking from this field like items off a menu. You're actively influencing which possibilities become your reality through your thoughts, feelings, and overall state of being. Think of it like a radio. Your inner state, your thoughts, emotions, beliefs, is like the frequency you're tuned to. Different frequencies pick up different stations. In the same way, different inner states resonate with different possibilities in the quantum field, bringing them into your experience. This idea isn't entirely new. A guy named Neville Goddard talked about something similar back in the mid 20th century. He called it the power of assumption. Goddard said that if you could assume the feeling of your wish being fulfilled, it would have to manifest in your reality. It's not about just thinking positive thoughts or daydreaming. It's about fully embodying the state of being of your desired reality. So if you want to be successful, it's not enough to just want success or visualize it. You need to embody the state of being of a successful person. How would a successful person think? How would they feel? How would they carry themselves? That's the state you need to assume. Now, let's talk about this mirror analogy. Imagine reality as a giant mirror. But this mirror doesn't just reflect your physical appearance. It reflects your inner world, your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotional state. If you're constantly anxious and worried, the mirror will reflect circumstances that justify those feelings. If you embody confidence and capability, the mirror will reflect opportunities and situations that match that state. This mirroring effect explains why people often experience the same patterns over and over in their lives. They're consistently projecting the same inner state, so they keep getting similar reflections. So. How do we actually apply this quantum law of being in our daily lives? Let's break it down into five steps. One, self-awareness. This is the foundation. You need to become aware of your current assumptions, beliefs, and emotional states. What do you believe about yourself, about the world? What's your default emotional state? This isn't always easy. We often have beliefs operating below the surface that we're not consciously aware of. It takes honest self-reflection and sometimes even journaling or meditation to uncover these. Two, conscious choice. Once you're aware of your current state, you can decide what state you want to embody instead. If you've been operating from a state of scarcity, you might choose to embody abundance. If you've been in a state of fear, you might choose courage. This step is about consciously choosing your desired state of being. Three, embodiment. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's not enough to just think about your chosen state. You need to fully inhabit it. This means aligning your thoughts, emotions, and actions with this new state. If you've chosen to embody confidence, you need to think confident thoughts, feel confident emotions, and take confident actions. It might feel fake at first, but stick with it. Four, persistence. This is crucial. You need to maintain this new state consistently even when your external circumstances haven't changed yet. This is where a lot of people give up. They try embodying a new state for a day or two, don't see instant results, and go back to their old state. 
But remember, in our three-dimensional world, change often unfolds gradually. You need to persist in your new state, trusting that reality will catch up. 5. Detachment. This might seem counterintuitive, but it's important to allow the external reality to align without trying to force specific outcomes. It's about trusting the process. You're embodying the state of being, but you're not attached to how exactly it manifests in your reality. This detachment actually allows things to unfold more naturally and often in surprising and delightful ways. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This all sounds great, but what about real world problems? What about social and economic factors? It's a valid question. The quantum law of being doesn't ignore these factors, but it suggests that even in challenging circumstances, your internal state influences how you navigate those circumstances and what opportunities you're able to perceive and seize. It's also worth noting that this law doesn't mean you don't have to take action. It's not about sitting on your couch and expecting the world to change. Rather, it suggests that effective action springs from an aligned internal state. A person embodying success is more likely to take successful actions than someone stuck in a state of failure, even if their external circumstances are identical. The quantum law of being is a powerful tool for personal transformation. It shifts the focus from trying to change external conditions to transforming our internal state. And as we change internally, we start to see those changes reflected in our external world. It's a different way of approaching life, one that puts the power of creation squarely in our own hands through our chosen state of being.